Good afternoon, everybody, for those who are joining us. Thank you for joining. You're welcome. We've just opened the meeting, so we'll have a few minutes for people to join. Hello, good afternoon. <laughs> good afternoon, Rosa. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> A long time. Yes, yeah, good to see you. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't done my uh, I haven't done my photo yet. That's we oh yeah, perhaps that should uh, um oh we haven't got the photos. I'm just thinking, Solomon, in your astronomy news yes i don't know if we should have our news or whether we should put leave it till next one I, rosa sent me a lovely photo with a certificate and i haven't done mine yet because i'm very naughty so well, okay i can do something like a teaser <laughs> okay okay <laughs> so there's some amazing news about sarah and then um rosa it has to do with asteroids so people should look out uh, next week for the details Now we're doing okay, good. <laughs> Welcome, Davis. See, put high in there. Yes, people, feel free to uh, say hello in the chat, and uh, maybe you can say where you're joining us from. So uh, we normally have people from different parts of Ghana and also someone's from outside Ghana. So always mention that in the, in the chat. Okay. So thank you, Rosier and Sakamono Tema. Good. No. And yes, hi Davis, I'm fine, thank you. Anyone else want to share where they're joining from? That's why we're waiting for others to join us. Josh, you're here, <laughs> finally. <laughs> Sorry, Josh is a, is a, is a colleague. I, I, I work with him in some other group. And so it's just, I, I don't normally see him here. So it's good to see him here. <laughs> so, um... Gifty says, I'm Gifty, I'm joining from Michigan. Glad to be here. That's amazing. Oh, wow. Great. Well, you're very welcome. Yeah, you're welcome, Gifty. And I should say that she, she actually tried to join very early. So that's cool. Thank you. Um, so we also have from Uriel, also says, hi, everyone. And mm -hmm. she also says, um, Georgie from um, that. Hey, Salam, be, yeah, it should be Dar es Salaam, Dar es Salaam, oh, Tanzania. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> welcome, welcome, Jiwaji. Jiwaji is a is a is a a veteran of astronomy, just so well known in all across. Well, not just I was going to say East Africa, but not just East Africa. We all know Jiwaji. He's he's promoted astronomy for so many years. He's a real champion of astronomy education and outreach. So it's always Good to have you with us. If you're in the planetarium uh, WhatsApp group, you know we often post really good photos from Tanzania of you know the moon and planets, and you can see how it looks different in East Africa to West Africa. So it's very interesting. Uh, a message from Isaac, uh, who is uh, joining from Durban. 
Thank you so much, Isaac. Nice Thanks. Great. So I would just like to remind everybody, um, so if you just joined, um, I think you can mute. Um, I think as we go on, if you have any questions, we, we would allow people to unmute and then um, ask your questions just so that we don't have a lot of questions. Thank you so much. Um, so Thank um, It's about five minutes. Great. Um, Sarah, should we wait for four minutes and then start? Or we can just Maybe just two minutes more. Encourage <laughs> people to, to come. Just turn my something to. I'm um, we I'm really excited for today. I'm looking forward to what we have Ghana Radio Astronomy um, Telescope. And it's great because um, as a researcher myself, I'm actually using radio data. So it's actually fun to have to talk about this uh, into more details, especially one in Ghana, uh, Africa, I should say. So that's great. <clears throat> so I'm um, just in the chat. Um, I think Georgie is back. He said, sorry, I can't seem to be able to unmute my mic. Thanks for the info. No worries, no worries. And I'll also apologize in case my voice, because my voice might sound a bit weird. I've had a terrible cold this week, but now it's it's almost gone, but my voice is a bit croaky. All right, thank you. Fine. So how's the weather in Leeds, Solomon? Um, yeah, so it's certainly a little bit warmer than before. Yeah, but then now and then sometimes it becomes a little bit cold. So I'm getting used to it gradually. So <laughs> good. <laughs> Today it's hot, hot and sunny, but it's been very rainy, grey and rainy, and storms and flooding, and oh, it's been oh. terrible. No. I like the rain, but not when it floods everybody. Oh, it's just oh. mm, okay. I think it's all global warming and stuff, right? Well, I mean, uh, I know you can't really, you know, you really have to. The scientists have to look at large amounts of data, but I mean, I've, you know, when you when you've been some even like you know ten to twenty years. I mean, the, the rainy season is different to when I first came to Ghana. It's very different. So, interesting. Okay. Yeah, I think we have um, a little bit more people join, so um, it's actually good. Um, maybe we can start in the next just one minute more, and then we can start. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. So I'll just do um, talk a little bit more about why we are here. Um, so every month, um, yeah, at the end of every month, we actually do uh, what we call the African Astronomy um, section. I think recently we invite more um, guest speakers to talk about very interesting themes in astronomy and sometimes even space science too. So um, um, today we actually have Ghana's first female astronomer. Um, I think this is the second time that she's actually joining. So it's great to actually have her. And she's going to talk about the Ghana Radio Astronomy um, observatory um, and that's actually really great to actually hear about um, I mean given that this is something that in the end people who know about the SKA project uh, Ghana's radio telescope will actually take part in that so it's actually quite interesting to um, have Dr. Um, and Naomi actually talk about um, I think coming up um, we also have a few um, other people to join and then talk about these things and of course if there's specific topics that you want to talk about or you want to hear about you can actually send us an email and we would be able to um, go on and um, maybe invite people to talk about those um, specific um, fields. So thank you so much for joining. All right, so Sarah, I think we can start now, right? Yes, can I just check one thing? Um, um, Jiwaji just wrote that, uh, well, he wrote Naomi's sound, but I think he meant your sound. Um, was, I mean, you wrote slow, I don't know if you meant low. I just wanted to check, can everybody hear 
us, both myself and Solomon, okay. You do feel free to write in the chat if. Can you hear me now. too? Hello. Yeah, I can hear you, Naomi. Yeah. Okay. But please let us know if, if you have any difficulty hearing any of us. We can person. hear you loud and clear. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> I said, so one. Okay, good. Thank you. So maybe Juwaji, maybe it's your connection. I'm not sure. Other people seem to be able to hear. Sorry yeah. about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think we can start now. Okay. I'm sure. Okay. Thank you so much for um, joining us for um, our May edition of our Arabic uh, Everything Economy section. Um, like I mentioned earlier on, today we have Dr. Naomi Sabre from Pong, um, who is a research scientist at the Ghana Space Science and Technology Institute, um, having to talk to us about the Ghana Radio Astronomy Observatory. I think Sarah is going to do a little bit more intro, but um, that's, that's what we are having for today. So um, just to start, I would just like to introduce myself. So I'm Solomon Kukwa Peke. Um, I'm, a, I'm, I'm actually an, um, an astronomy and um, science and communicator. Um, and I also do work for um, a young space startup in Ghana called the Xavier Space Solution. Um, and of course, as always, I have Sarah Bushi Masters, who is the weekend's event coordinator um, at the Ghana Planetarium and also with the African Astronomical Society. So Sarah, say hi. <laughs> Okay, great. So, um, yeah, sometimes we go to different planets. This is <laughs> hi, hi, Sarah. Yeah, hi, Abraham. Yeah. So, um, this is us on Mars. Yeah. All right. So, um, if you happen to be in Ghana, I'm sure you know about the Ghana Planetarium. So, it's a place where you actually have a planetarium, which um, is a dome like structure, which you can actually be able to um, have a view of the universe in an amazing style in, in the sense that if, as you can see in this image, you can see a few people inside the planetarium and then depending on what you show, you could um, get a treat on, let's say a trip to um, a nearby black hole or um, a nearby um, star system. So definitely get to visit the Ghana planetarium. Um, and also um, helping to uh, make um, this section possible is the uh, space setup in Ghana that I mentioned. Um, and then um, some of the things that they do is they have um, specific um, STEM modules. And um, so that teaches kids um, coding, robotics, and et cetera. And one of the key things um, that they are actually doing at the moment is to build experimental satellites. So if I say experimental satellite, I mean these are satellites that don't go to space. And they go to a specific altitude and perform very interesting science um, goals or missions like measure the um, atmospheric um, air pollution and stuff like that. So um, if you want to know more, you can always get in touch. Um, uh, so no, no, no news yet. So uh, over to Sarah to uh, do the other introduction and then um, take us there. Oh, okay. I thought actually you were going to do the news first, but I don't mind. I can do the introduction. Oh, okay. All right. I think we'll do the news later. Uh, pardon? I think we will do the news later then. Later. Okay, then. Okay, no problem. No problem. Okay, so then if you uh, can you stop sharing then and then I'll share my screen. Okay. So, yes, so we, are, we have Naomi with us today, Dr. Naomi. We're going to talk about the Ghana Radio Astronomy Observatory. So, first of all, I just wanted to make sure that everyone. Ah, okay, and let me just move this, hold on. Okay, that everyone uh, is okay with radio astronomy, because we talk a lot about astronomy, 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 and actually I remember the first time I met somebody who said they were a radio astronomer, and I really just thought, uh -huh. I just, I just, I just didn't get it. So let's just uh, make sure we're all okay on what is radio astronomy. So, oh, hold on, my machine doesn't want to, oh, there we go, okay. So um, what do astronomers do? They um, are studying the objects in space, these celestial objects, and how are they gonna study them? Because it's different. If you are studying plants, then you can go out to the field and look at the plant, take photos, take measurements. You can even take a sample of the plant, bring it back to the lab, do whatever you want with it, and you can find out everything you need. But if you're studying planets and stars and galaxies, you can't 
bring those things into your lab. So the only way you can study them is by looking at them, is by examining the light that's coming from those objects. And in fact, it's quite amazing how much we can find out just by looking at the light. But we kind of have to be a bit careful what we mean by this word light. Um, in astronomical terms, it's slightly different to the way we sort of use it in everyday terms. Um, so, so light is a form of electromagnetic radiation. Um, it, it travels as a wave. And you know, when you see a wave, just like a, I mean, if you imagine like a water wave, that some of the, the waves can be very like long, like a, a, a long wave or a very short wave. So the, the distance between the wave crest is called the wavelength. So that can be long or it can be short. Um, so there are different wavelengths of this radiation, which therefore gives rise to a spectrum. It's, just, it's not just, oh, it's one kind of wave and it's this exact wavelength and they're all the same. There's a whole range of wavelengths and therefore there's a whole spectrum of, of radiation. And so what we call light, what we can see with our eyes is actually just one tiny, tiny part of that whole spectrum. So really, we, we, in astronomical terms, you call that visible light and because there's actually other types of light. Um, so these are the names of the different areas. You've got gamma rays, you've got X-rays, you've got ultraviolet rays. Then this titchy tiny little bit here, which has been expanded at the bottom, is the visible light. You've got infrared and, uh, well, you often we put microwave and radio waves, they, they put them together here. And you can see that on the left-hand side, it's very short wavelength. You know, the waves are very close together. And on the right-hand side, they're very long wavelengths. Um, and notice also that the, the scale here that has the, the, the wavelength is not a linear scale. It's not going one centimeter, two centimeter, three centimeter. It's going one centimeter, one meter, 100 meters. So this is like a logarithmic scale. So if it was a linear scale, it would be enormous. So, so it's really a huge range, um, this electromagnetic spectrum. It covers a huge range of wavelengths. And the visible light is just this tiny, tiny part. Um, and that's all that, that we can see. And the, uh, can somebody please, uh, can everyone please mute? Uh, I can hear some background noise there. Uh, so yeah, so for us, the visible light can be split in, up into the colours of the rainbow, which I'm sure we're all familiar with. And the only reason we see those colours is it's different wavelengths. Okay, um, so the shorter wavelength is the, the, the blue or the violet, and the longer wavelength is the red. And in case you're sort of thinking, oh, but all those things, they sound very kind of abstract, gamma rays, ultraviolet, what's that? In fact, we do come across these different kinds of radiation in everyday life. Uh, can we not have any uh, of the, what do you call it? The scribbling. Um, so radio, we, most people are familiar with the radio. We have, that's where you get your radio waves coming in. Um, microwave, we, uh, you may have a microwave oven and even uh, aircraft communication can use microwaves. Uh, infrared, your TV remote control, you just sit and press a button and something magical happens, that's through infrared, or also you may see that through these night vision goggles, often you see that in movies and television programs. Um, visible light, that's what we see, uh, you know, from light bulbs, from the sun, all around us. Um, ultraviolet, uh, is, well, that's the, the radiation from the sun that damages our skin. Um, you know, if you have uh, pale skin, uh, it, it, it can be damaged more easily, uh, but even our dark skin can also be damaged by, and it's the ultraviolet light that does that. Um, X-rays, uh, if you're unfortunate enough to have an accident and they think you may have broken a bone, uh, you'll have the ultraviolet light, light, the effect, please, can you come in again, the explanation, the effects on us. The ultraviolet okay. light. Okay. Could I just ask that next time? Can you put your message in the in the in the chat, the chat yeah. so so that I can sort of finish and then yeah. All right. But, thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
But yes, what I said about the ultraviolet light from the sun is, is, is it's, it's, it's that's the type of radiation which damages your skin. You know, they say if you stay out in the sun too long, or certainly for people with, with pale skin, um, they can, you can get skin cancer. You get skin, your skin can get sunburn, uh, and then you can also get skin cancer. So, you, you know, if you've seen, uh, you know, European, American, white people, basically, sometimes when they go out into the sun without putting on, uh, protection the sun the, the skin can go really red you can tell it looks really sore that sunburn and if it happens too much then you can develop um, skin cancer so our darker skin naturally has more um, protection but it used it still can be damaged by by ultraviolet light uh, so then um, x-rays yes as i was saying if you're unfortunate enough to have an accident and maybe you break a bone uh, or you think you've broken a bone, you may go to the hospital and take an x-ray picture, same in uh, the dentist. And that same uh, technique is used for airport security scanners. They use x-rays to scan uh, uh, the luggage and so on. And then the gamma rays, uh, again, are used for, for certain uh, medical, other types of medical scanners. So, so these things are actually um, all around us. But the issue is, or the point is, that these all these celestial objects that we want to learn more about, they emit radiation from all different parts of the spectrum. They emit radio waves, uh, gamma rays, uh, you know, ultraviolet, all different, all different parts of the spectrum to a greater or lesser, lesser extent. You know, some objects emit more in one part of the spectrum, some objects emit more in other parts of the spectrum. So if we want to understand these objects, we need to be able to use all the light from across the whole spectrum to really get a, a full picture. And the good thing is, so we can build telescopes or detectors that can detect the light from the different regions of the spectrum, okay? So if you want to examine infrared light, you build an infrared telescope and therefore you're doing infrared astronomy. So here's a picture of the uh, James Webb Space Telescope. Uh, launched a few months ago, now approaching its like final um, testing, and hopefully we'll get the first images from that in like June or July. So that's very exciting. That's going to be infrared images. Um, if you want to, de to detect the X-rays, uh, you need an X-ray telescope like the Chandra Observatory, and that's so that's doing X-ray astronomy. And if you want to study the radio waves, then you need a radio telescope or radio observatory. And that means you're doing radio astronomy, which is what we're going to be talking about. And that picture there is the Ghana Radio Astronomy Observatory. So the other thing you need to think about is where you're going to put your telescopes. So you've decided what kind of astronomy you want to do. Then you have to think about where you're going to put your telescope because not all the electromagnetic radiation from space can reach the ground, <coughs> excuse me. So this diagram is showing that on the left here, the gamma rays and X-rays and some of the ultraviolet, see it doesn't reach the Earth's surface. So if you want to study that, your telescope has to be in space. But a bit of ultraviolet and then the visible and a bit of infrared, that does reach the ground. But normally we put the observatories high up on mountains to try and be above the, the weather. But then a lot of the infrared doesn't reach the ground, but then a certain amount of the microwave and radio um, emissions do reach the ground. Uh, but some of the longer radio wavelengths don't reach. So if you want to study visible or radio, you can put your telescope on the ground. Otherwise, you have to go to space, which of course is a lot more expensive. So here's just an example of a a picture of an object that's called the Whirlpool Galaxy using different uh, wavelengths of light. Now, I should just say, don't worry too much about the colors. Um, astronomers use what they call false color. We're not saying, oh, if you use radio, then you're gonna get a purple image like this. Um, they're looking at the intensity of the radio emission and um, assigning colors to indicate the, the intensity. So it's like, if you like, it's just a false color to give you an idea of, of the intensity. But you can see that, you know, when you look in radio, uh, you see different structures or more detail 
in some areas than in others. You know, when you look in uh, infrared, you're seeing a lot more here because infrared is sh showing you, like it says, the cooler stars, and there's many, many of those. Here's optical. This is what you'd see with your eyes or with, a, if you like, a normal telescope. With ultraviolet, it's showing the very hot stars, which again are concentrated in certain places. And then if you're looking at x-rays, you've got a, you know, a real concentration in the center and, and not much anywhere else, uh, because that's where the x-rays are being emitted from. So by using all these different types of telescopes and different types of light, you're able to find out a lot more about this one object than if you were just looking at the optical or, or any of them on their own. So this is the, the strength of multi-wavelength uh, astronomy. Now, sometimes, sorry, let me just quickly go back. Sometimes radio images, you know, sometimes people might think, oh, you know, radio astronomy, it's not quite so sort of, I don't know, sexy in a way as some of the other astronomy, because sometimes people think, oh, the, the images aren't, you know, quite, they're not really quite as pretty when you compare it to this the middle image here. But nowadays, with the very, very good radio telescopes we have, we can get fantastic images images that show us amazing detail. And this is an image of the, the center of our Milky Way telescopes in South Africa. And this is just amazing. I mean, look at all these amazing details, which had never been seen before. All these, these are not, this is not a mistake. The, these are structures that we're seeing um, in the Milky Way. Um, you know, these weird bubbles and things here, and then these long structures. And the same here, you can see all these parallel filaments. I mean, you know, it's amazing. When these pictures came out, everyone was just astounded at, at the uh, detail that we can now get um, with radio astronomy. So, so really, um, uh, radio astronomy is, is, is giving us a lot of new and amazing information. And, uh, and in fact, Africa is starting to become really quite a hub for radio astronomy. And it's great that, that Ghana is, is part of that. So that was really my, sorry, it's a bit of a breakneck <laughs> introduction to radio astronomy. So, but please, any, any questions uh, or any, anything, does that make sense or do I need to clarify anything? I feel like I've been talking a lot. <laughs> yeah, I think it was great. Uh, yeah. Uh, so maybe I think during our Q&A, which would kind of be after uh, Dr. Naomi has um, given a talk, we can maybe put together all the questions. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hello, yes, Abraham. Yes. Um, looking at all the rays, the gamma, the X-ray, the ultra, and the radio distance, can you specifically tell X uh, the purpose of this race. For example, I have a, I'm a health worker with a health worker background. So I have seen a lot of the x-rays. Yeah. So now in a hospital, for example, I know, I have not know the reason why we use the x-ray because x-ray goes straight to the point, the center, if I'm right. From years, it goes, you can see directly at the center what is happening there. But the gamma and the ultra uh, violent rays, what are their uses? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Solomon, are you taking that one for me? Yes, yes. Um, I can take it. Um, so, yeah, so that's a very, very good question. Um, so, for example, uh, in terms of um, I mean general radiation, so you asked specifically about gamma rays, right? You asked about gamma rays, right? Okay. We talk of the radio, the gamma, the ultraviolet, and those things. I think she was tell us specifically the use of this. As for X-ray, I'm okay from okay. what she has seen, and then with my background. I now understand the reason why we use the X-ray in the hospital. Okay. But the other, for example, gamma, why should I go for a gamma or a travalent or a radio? Yes. So um, in terms of applications, 
So even, I mean, even x-rays, I mean, it's, it's applied in the, the medical field. Those other radiations, depending on their frequencies, um, will tell what you will use it for. For example, um, ga gamma rays are very high radiation. So um, processes like um, um, from, I mean, if you have radioactive decay and those things, that's when you have some of these um, radiations being produced. So in that, what I would say in terms of um, applying it to health and all those things, um, X-rays is very useful, for example. Now, radio waves, of course, uh, we know this is very useful in terms of communication. And like Sarah mentioned, even in astronomy, it gives us uh, a terrible to shed more light in terms of the details sort of things that we can actually learn. So in terms of astronomy or in terms of, yeah, to be specific in terms of astronomy, these different wavelengths of light or di this um, different wavelengths gives us more understanding in terms of the things that we look at. So you can think of the things like the stars the, um, and, and all the structures in, um, in space really. And the thing is, um, in general, most of these natural um, objects that we do have in space produce these different types of radiation. So um, in terms of astronomy, that's how useful um, they are um, to us in, in general. I hope that answers your question. Uh, so no, I yeah. am not all that clear with you. Okay. But not to waste waste time. You know, for like example, yeah, yeah, like yeah. When, yeah. I think yeah, now you can add up, yeah. <laughs> Do you mind if I add up a bit more? Then if if you are not so satisfied, we can always talk about it in, um, again. Go, so, go ahead. Go, go ahead. So Solomon did a really good job. So um for astronomy. You know, all the ways are very important to us because they tell us different things because they are looking at different um, parts of a molecule, basically, that's how, how I would say it. So for the gamma rays, which is a very, very short wavelength, very fast um, light, I should say, it goes to very, very minute part of the atom, okay, going into the nucleus of the atom. And so what's currently on Earth, we use those rays for is for material defect detection, okay? Like in GAEC, we use it to, you know, when they construct um, oil tankers and they do very heavy metal constructions, they bring it to us to, you know, pass it through our gamma ray machine and all those uh, radioactive uh, things to check whether there are any defects because it goes right into the nucleus, into the, the, the lattices of the, you know, the bonds and stuff like that. So that's the direct application on Earth that we use, okay? And now if you come to, coming down, going to more, more like X-rays, which you know already, go, it's, it's not as fast as gamma rays. So it's, it's, it, it, it can go through bones. That's why we use it for X-rays. So it can go through flesh. And so it stops at the bone and therefore you use it to detect the you know, bone fractures or very dense organs in the body, that kind of thing. And then ultraviolet, it's you know directly from the sun, so it's it's light, not visible light. You no, know, like there's high ultraviolet, there's UV, the visible, and there's ultraviolet. Okay, visible is the red to purple that we see, but ultraviolet is is invisible, and there are different ranges of them. And mostly we use them in the form of light, and we switch it to make fluorescent lamps and all forms of light lens. Okay, that's the direct um, benefit that we like tanning beds, people use it to tan their skins, you know, to be more blush or stuff like that. And now going down and down and down, we go to microwaves, which are usually used for communication. Even your phones are using microwaves to connect to the, the towers. And then we come to radio waves, which we use for our you know, radios. And even before we're using them for our televisions. So those are the base, the you know, application F that we use this electromagnetic waves for. I don't know whether I've answered your questions. Uh, if you still need something, I, I am very happy. I'm not, I'm not there, there, this thing. There is okay. Spanish. Very, very. I'm not happy. Right. Very, very happy. Anna, thank you very much, Abraham. And just before you go on, this uh -huh. microwave, uh -huh. there's uh, this uh, speculations that uh, if you put food in this our microwave, as we say, uh -huh. it can give cancer. Now, from what Sarah said, linking it. I know micro uh, 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 ultraviolet standing in the redirect sunlight 
sun uh, sun rays light can affect uh, affect the body. Yeah. But microwave, from what you are saying, which we can use in terms of communications, how can it give us cancer? Okay, I don't want to be politically correct, so I can't really say. So, okay, you finish. Uh huh. Please finish. It's speculations. The yes. Putting your food in a microwave, those things can give cancer. True or false? Let me put it that way. <laughs> I can't say true. I can't say false because I've never done any research on that, and I have not. That yeah, I should, I should have, I've not done any research on that. But what I know microwaves do is that microwaves are targeted at the bonds between molecules or elements. So like if you take water, for example, it has a hydrogen and two oxygens, and there's a bond. So microwave will target the bond between hydrogen and oxygen and vibrate it. Okay, so when you put your food into a microwave, especially it's good to add a little bit of water because the water will be energized vibrate and warm up the whole food for you. So basically what microwave is doing. As to whether it will destroy the structure of the food and give you cancer, I can't really say for sure, but that's what uh, I know microwaves do because they are from their actually slipping up and down and putting the bones in the molecule and vibrating them to give you heat. So maybe we we'll have to do more research and next time target whether microwaves give you cancer or not, because basically I have not done any research on that. So I can't say yes or no, but I can tell you what microwaves do. Yo, thank you very much. I'm not good. Yeah. I'm not good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, but thank you so much. I know, I mean, I mean, we actually love when people ask questions. Um, so great. Thank you so much. Um, however, I think we are drifting a little bit from the main topic for today. So maybe let's quickly get back to that. And then at the end, we can explore this. And like um, Dr. Naomi mentioned, we can actually invite, invite an expert to maybe explore um, this more. Um, I think your first question also, you have a few more answers in the chat. So if you check there, there are more basic applications of some of these radiations. So thank you so much, everybody. Um, I think Sarah, you can do an intro and then we can uh, go to the main topic. But please don't be discouraged. Any questions, just put in the chat and also you have a Q&A um, section, so. Sorry, I'm even. Yes, <laughs> sorry. Yes, sorry, I, what did you say? <laughs> I was listening really. Um, yeah, so I was like, if you could do an intro um, um, to Dr. Naomi so that she could um, go on. Okay. <laughs> okay, oh no, no, I've missed my, I had a nice little slide, but I missed it. Anyway, okay, yes, so. Good, let's get over to our, our guest speaker for today, our main talk. So yes, I'm very excited to introduce uh, Dr. Naomi Asabri from Pong. As uh, Solomon mentioned earlier, she has been with us once before when she talked about her journey into astronomy. She's first Ghana's first um, official uh, uh, female astronomer, which is very exciting. And also very recently, she was elected vice president of the African Astronomical Society. <laughs> so. <laughs> so it's good to have our Ghana represented there. Um, but today she's here to talk about uh, the Ghana Radio Astronomy Observatory. Uh, we know um, some of us here have visited and we love going there, but we know that it's somewhere that still not everybody knows about. And even if they know about it, they might not be too sure what it really is and what goes on there. So we're, uh, we'd like Naomi to tell us more about it. So uh, Naomi, please go ahead. Hello, everyone. It's, it's good to be back. <laughs> okay, I'm going to share my screen. It's really good to be back. Um, welcome to, or oh, good to see you again to those I met the last time and to those who are just seeing me for the first time, it's good to see you too. And I hope we'll meet again. I'm sure we will, because Sarah and I are now buddies. <laughs> I'm sure we'll, I'll, I'll come back to talk more about astronomy. So today I'm talking about um, Ghana Radio Astronomy Observatory, which is uh, one great achievement that Ghana has made since our journey into space science. And, and it's, for short, it's called Brow. We Astronomers like giving acronyms to everything. Even if there's no way of giving an acronym, we give it an acronym, so it's called Brow. And you are most welcome to visit us anytime. You are always welcome to visit us. We have experts on hands to give you a tour. You can climb our telescope. We'll, get, we'll show you the back end and our processing 
room, which we call the rack room, where we do our data processing and also operate the telescope. So we are located at Kuntunsi, which is in, uh, I think, Ganoth, municipality of Wetaka region. Um, it used to be a very uninhabited place, but now we are surrounded by estates all around. So you are, you are very welcome to join us. Now, let me give you a little bit of history. So about 12 years ago or so, um, South Africa bidded for, bidded to host the Square Kilometer Array, which is for short SK. I told you like, like acronyms. So like radio telescopes, um, are instruments we use to, to view radio waves coming from outer space, okay? And what we came to realize that with a very peculiar equation, that the bigger the diameter of the telescope, the better you can see and the further you can see. So the biggest telescope we have currently is about is 100 meters, okay? But the bigger the telescope, the much harder it is to operate it, you know, move it around or track, you know, an object or something. So we had a brilliant idea, well, not me, <laughs> Most of the scientists, astronomers in the world had a brilliant idea that we can make the biggest telescope ever the size of the Earth. Now, how do we do that? Or a telescope is like a square kilometer. But that is like going across countries. So how do you do that? And then we, we remember the, the magic science of astronomy called VLBI, or interferometry, which is very long baseline interferometry, where um, the distance between two telescopes is how, how big a telescope is. So if you have two telescopes looking at the same thing, basically the distance between them is kind of like the distance of one big telescope. So imagine if we can have telescopes scattered around the world all in one spectrum area. It means that we, are, we have a spectrum of telescope area viewing the universe. So it means that we have a very, very efficient, very high uh, resolution, high sensitivity telescope available for us to look at the sky. So how do we do that? It's going to be all over the world. So all countries came into bid and South Africa with its partner countries, um, which included Ghana and eight and seven other countries, um, won, I would say the big part of the telescope, of the, of the bid to, to build this telescope. Now, the, the nine countries now, I'll say, make what we call the African VLBI network. So it's African for short ABN. And so Ghana became the first country apart from South Africa to have a radio telescope. Now this radio telescope was first actually a ground receiving station, okay? A satellite for communication used by the Ghana um, telecommunication um, company then. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Again, someone, can everyone mute, please? Okay, so, so can keep the background noise down. All right, so this um, antenna, what they used to call it then, was commissioned in 1981, very long time ago. And for after I know when fiber optics came, it became redundant for almost 20 years. It was not being used. And because it was just used to, re to receive geostationary satellite, you know, just stand at one place and just receive signals on satellite, didn't have a lot of functionality that we needed for it to be a, a radio telescope because a radio telescope has to position and track a source, you know, go up and go sideways to be able to track a source. So what we needed to do was that we needed to convert it into a radio telescope. And so South Africa in partnership with Ghana, okay, decided to convert this telescope into a radio telescope, which took us about 10 years, I'll say, maybe about five years to get to first light. So in 2017, so during these five years, we changed the motors, we changed the control system, which is the back end, and we changed the back end, so which is, uh, we changed how we control the telescope, we changed the motors that drive the telescope, basically we had to raise the telescope up, change the tracks, and set it back down. It was a huge undertaking. And then we had to change how we process the data because we're receiving different signals, basically. So in 2017, it was commissioned by the president then. And you can see me, if 
a spider, but you can see me in the corner there, you know, smiling by the plaque. I was there on that day and when the president came to commission it. And in that same year, actually, we had what we call a first light. That is when the telescope officially signified the, the completion of the conversion. It was, it's not totally complete, but we could join with other telescopes to do VLBI, which is the main purpose of the conversion, that we can connect with other African countries and even European telescopes to do VLBI. Okay, so in 2017, we are able to do that. And currently, we are still doing a lot of you know, back-end works, like because the telescope can view, but we want to do more science with it. So we are putting in a maser room to make our maser observation more efficient. We are putting a pulsar back end to be able to observe pulses. And we are going to put in a timer to be able to do VLBI more efficiently because we all have to be on the same time. We can't use your watch to do timing on VLBI. We have to use an atomic you know, a clock. So probably uh, like a cesium, some, some, something to time everybody so we can start viewing at a particular time. So all these things are currently ongoing to make it more VLBI ready, I would say. So we can't do VLBI, yeah, we need to do a bit more science. You know, COVID has been ongoing for about two years. So some of the works have been delayed, but currently we are now getting back on track to you know, finish totally the conversion. So on our site, we have three telescopes. We have a 32 meter telescope, which is actually what we use for observation, the radio telescope. And we also have a 16 meter telescope and a nine meter telescope, which are currently redundant, but we are planning to you know, convert them to do whether you know, citizen science or students can come and do research with them to observe um, interesting special phenomena. So those are all in the pipeline to be done. Currently, we also have, um, we are hosting VASAT, um, who, which have a, a geostationary you know, telescope to receive signals from their satellites. So, so um, GRA is, is moving forward. You know, from 10 years ago, when first Ghana went into space, we were the laughing stock of the country, basically. It was like, Ghana, we can't even pay our medical bills, our roads are horrible, you know, and you're thinking of going to space. But being part of the world science, the forefront of the, the three greatest questions that the world wants to answer is a great achievement for Ghana. And to have the second, the country, the second country to host a radio telescope is quite an achievement because Africa does have, has been astronomy for a while, but most people have had radio um, optical telescopes, okay? But to have a radio telescope is quite an achievement. And I, I think Ghana needs to clap for ourselves. So um, these are inside the, you know, the receiver because a telescope has the dish and a receiver to receive the signals. You know, people are these are some of our staff working on them. You know, the feed horn and the receiver are all there. And then this is what we call our, our rack room, a very cold, narrow room with racks and racks of computers and storage systems to store our data. Because you know, we are receiving data in high volumes, so in gigabytes, and all those ones above gigabytes. So we need a place to store them. We need fast internet to process them. So these are these are where we, this is where we control the, the for the telescope and where we receive the data and process it. And we also have a, a very manageable conference stroke lecture room where we have trainings. And I think Sarah and Solomon have all been there before, and we are really um, into you know science communication outreach and training. And we, we envision we, we continue doing that because we need to let people know about uh, what wonderful things Ghana is doing in the space, you know, science. Um, so currently what we are doing um, in, in GRAL is we do radiation pattern, uh, predictive maintenance. Um, that means like we look at something on an obvious source and then we know this is how it's supposed to, this is what we are supposed to receive from it. We need uh, maybe a flux of this amount of Janskis, we need a temperature of this amount of Janskis, we need it to be offset here. And if it's not, we know our telescope is off somehow and then we fix it. We do antenna modeling, we do methanol, we observe methanol mazes, uh, we observe pulses, we do data science and simulations. We are currently working on doing extensive VLBI and we do something called space geodesy which is very, very important for VLBI and even for other areas of science, like uh, 
offshore mining of oil and stuff. So you need to know the exact position of where you want to mine and telescopes all over the world in VLBI can help you know exactly where you are on the Earth, which we call geodesy. So the geologists use it and the, and the space science or the telescopes help them to do this kind of science. Also, we also do a high performance computing, which is data processing and you know computing and programming. So we have staff who do that. So basically our telescope can help do all this. I won't say our telescope can do all of this, but when we are finally connected to VLBI, the AVN, and finally the SKA, we can do many of the sciences that are listed here, like knowing about um, where we come from, um, the galaxy evolution, origin of cosmic magnetism, pulses and black hole, the cradle of life, which is mostly about uh, mazes and star formation and planets, and also other signs because space is not stagnant, it's always dynamic. Things are always happening that we had no idea could happen. And we had no idea a couple of years ago that you know, um, two neutron stars can, can crash together and form one or you know, so many things are always happening in space that we had no idea. And they are always fun and interesting to observe them. So basically that is what and the Ghana Radio Telescope is about. So uh, I told you mainly, currently one of the sciences we are focused on is the methanol mazes because we can use the telescope as a stance to observe methanol mazes. Now, if somebody asks what is methanol mazes? So you all know methanol, right? So methanol is a younger version of ethanol. <laughs> so if you take any alcohol you have, the smaller version, the, the first born is methanol, which is just a, a C and two H's and an OH. It's a very um, light alcohol, which you probably go blind if you take it. And most of have, have gone blind. I think there was a news some time ago that people drank some alcohol, some brewed alcohol, which they didn't really separate the ethanol from the methanol and some people went blind. So we do observe that in space. And how it is is that it is acceleratedly uh, produced and ejected in a, in a way that's quite unique much, much more higher than other molecules. And so, and this is because of where it is formed. It is formed when new stars are being born. And not just any stars, massive stars. Stars are like 200 times the size of our sun. So they, they, are, they are what we call signposts for stellar evolution. So once you observe a methanol maser, you know a massive star is being born in that area. So we do monitor some mazes we want monitor when they flare up and when they go down over period, periodically we measure them and there, these are wonderful data that people need, scientists all over the world need so that they can actually know what's going on in our Milky Way galaxy and also in other galaxies around the world. So we are heavily involved in methanol maser monitoring and observation. I think um, these are some of our results from methanol masers. You can see that we have a very, very high temperature and some temperature of what we call flux of methanol maser detected. And compared to the other uh, signals, they are very, those are very weak, but the methanol maser is very, very high. So we, we are periodically doing methanol maser observation. So currently I'll say thank you. And um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have about well, or astronomy in general. I don't know all about astronomy. <laughs> I'm not like the, all in and <laughs> even all of astronomy, but I can help answer um, some if you do. So thank you for listening, and I'm open for questions. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, thank you, Naomi. You're welcome. Thank you very thank much. You. Uh, yeah. I yes, am so 60, I am sixty-one years. Sixty-one years. Yes. I remember when. Princess Diane was doing her wedding. That was the first time we heard about this. I don't know your name. We heard of Kuntinase. I don't know if it's the same satellite station. Kuntinase. Yes. yes. And this yes. was by the then head of state, Achampo. Mm -hmm. That was when this thing was it. And we used it to observe Princess Diane's wedding. Yes. Well, that, right. Yes. So yes. Light. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a radio station. Mm. In fact, 
my concern is when I, I heard about your presentation, my concern is that in Africa, or precise, let's talk about Ghana. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of superstition. Mm. Yes. And if you tell somebody something, say, no, you know, our ancestors, <laughs> I am a Rotarian. I went to the Vota region uh, when the, uh, this uh, total eclipse okay. Mm -hmm. My grandfather was telling me, no, it isn't what I was doing this thing. I tried my best to explain it to him. But mm -hmm. that's my interest to this uh, uh, astronomy something. As mm -hmm. this thing. Now, this continuity, the radio station, I don't know how you call it now. I Right now. It's, it's called uh, Kuntunse. The area is called Kuntunse, and the telescope is called Ghana Radio Astronomy Observatory. A very good. Yes. But it was doing Princess Diane's time. That yes. we used to, to observe Princess Diane's uh, 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 wedding uh, this thing. Yes. Now, as you have uh, you are you have presented, mm -hmm. I don't know your objectives. I wish I was thinking you would tell us your objectives. What are you going to use this station to help us to oh. understand? I don't know whether I'm not going to astronomy or this, 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 or this but please, your objectives objectives what okay. are you going to use this station to uh, to educate us okay that is my the question all right thank you. thank you thank you abraham thank you for the question so so the first time um, the south africans came and saw that we had uh, the redundant at the station we had no idea <laughs> we just knew it was there but they told us oh it can be you know converted and we're like oh really and then we all you know, pushed the government and everyone went into observe, uh, into um, converting it. Now, one of the main things we had to deal with was what would the local person think? Why, why is it useful for him or her to have this telescope you know, in Ghana? Is it even important? Now, for the layman, looking at stars is probably not that important to a person, but for Ghana currently, Having a radio telescope puts us in uh, the pinnacle of science. You know, however, radio telescopes are mentioned, Ghana is also mentioned. Whenever SK is mentioned, Ghana is also mentioned. We want Ghana to be part of world science. Ghana has always been, you know, following the trends, always been behind. You know, when somebody does it, then we also do some. But now we want Ghana to be part of the, the people moving the science. Now, our objective currently, what we are doing is we want everyone around the telescope to know about the telescope and how it is helping the country. Because now it is helping people who are be aware that there is data science, data manipulation, data processing, data programming available. Because when you are using a telescope, you are getting a huge amount of data and you need people to work with the data. The Western world already has this that Ghana was lacking behind. Now with the telescope, people are now realizing we are training people in a high performance computing so that they can work with that data. Now, if you work with that data, it doesn't mean you always stay in astronomy. That skill is always um, applicable in other areas. It's applicable in health, it's applicable in road transport, it's applicable in town planning, it's applicable everywhere. Okay, so we are trying to make people feel, know that even though it's a radio telescope, and the skills needed are high level skills. Those skills are transferable. They are cross-disciplinary. It can be used in other areas of science and economic development. Now, so it won't be like, oh, we're training people in astronomy because they are staying in astronomy. These people trained are going to develop a country in other areas. So that's our main aim. We want the country to develop scientifically because skills used in astronomy are transferable everywhere. Now, the engineers that we have working on the telescope, their skills are now being used in GAEC and other there. We've, we've trained certified welders. We've trained engineers. We've trained RF engineers also. Electronics, all those people are being trained and their skills are being transferred to other areas of science. We have some of our scientists doing um, medical, medical um, science using the skills, the data analysis skills they learned in, in astronomy. So that's our main aim, not just astronomy, but we want to develop Ghana scientifically. And we are using astronomy to do it. 
I hope I've answered your question. Answered my my. I'm very happy. Okay. In fact, if not for it, the sake of today, I thought that station Kutunase is dead. <laughs> I never did. Since I'm happy about that. <laughs> Since at Champon's time, I never knew this station was because at the last time I passed to that in Sawam Road, I, yes. I couldn't locate the place. Yes. In those days, uh, in those days, it was just the isolated place in the bush. When you yes. are traveling to Kumasi or soon, you can even see it with the <laughs> satellite station. But now with the buildings and those things, I can't even locate the place. I'll try to visit the place. Please, you're always welcome. Yes, yeah. I'll try. Then the other thing is, please, uh, science is a mystery to Africans, Ghanaians specifically. Mm -hmm. uh, science and religion had you no know, religion. I I I I I I I joined a bus with somebody the other time, and this person was talking about a cocoa, cocoa. Specifically, he, he, he wanted to talk about, uh, 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 I think, menstrual period, when Messi's and all those things. You know, as you are growing, your Messi's will have to reduce it not to spiritual. And it looks as if everybody in the bus, 55 of us in the bus, I can tell you 90% of us believe what the man was saying. But in science, we are not making a headway. We are not making headway at all. I don't know. The radio station, we have, the other time when they were talking, we have about 82 FM stations. I don't know how you can go through about it. But please, some of us, we are prepared to help you. Okay. If you can go run. It says science is beautiful. Science, is, I, 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 I used to tell my brothers. My bro lot of my brothers did as I did science, and science. I tell them the science. Science is physical. You can see the result physically. It's not spiritually. You cannot something you can imagine. But religion and those things has taken over all of us in Ghana, and especially those who are selling this herbal this thing. Their method of preaching, their method of communication is entering deep into us. That if you not take time, science will die. <laughs> science, yes. Thank you, Abraham. I'm sure, I'm sure science will not die. Uh, I think if it will not die, it will take you a long time. Some of you, I'm 61. I don't know how old are you. It will take you a long time. Even you, you will die before science will catch up with some of us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, so help us. Yes, we will. Yeah. Uh, the radio stations. So the yeah. FM stations. Yeah, there are plans this year to do um, what we call revisibility, okay, of the Ghana space science technology. It's not just astronomy, but the Ghana space science, which includes both the use of remote sensing and astronomy, and also the engineering part of it, you know, satellite communication. So there are there are plans to do, you know nationwide or at least read most radio station i go and talk about what we do and educate the public about it and i'm sure you hear about us soon we hear about us soon uh, thank you very much i'm, I'm sure we are, we, are, we are very frustrated we are all frustrated because you get so many comments that you wonder whether um what's going on in the world but what's going on in Ghana about people and science but we'll do our best sarah and the rest solomon are also doing their best with the planetarium trying to educate people so We'll do as much as we can. I, I'm still a hand up. Is Joseph? Yeah, please. Be, be, before you go, let me conclude. Yes, okay. My question goes to Sarah. No, Is that right. possibility that Ghana can launch a spacecraft? Okay. You know what? Sorry. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Abraham, would you mind if I we let Joseph say something? Because you you've given us lots of wonderful questions, but please let's have a chance of some other people I'll, I'll, to speak, I'll, and then and then we'll come back. Yes. I'll come back to you, Abraham. I'll answer that question. Um, Joseph, please, so can Joseph, you? Yeah. yeah, thank you very much. And then I enjoy your presentation. It's a long time I've been involved in a, a astronomy. In fact, like you said, I was the age, same age as the previous uh, speaker. <laughs> you might know, interestingly, 
in the 80s, I was ten, had my physics degree and I was aiming at astrophysics. In fact, oh. I joined the, the Planetary Society, uh, then oh. by Carl Sagan, right? Mm. And in, in interest, if you go back to archives, I wrote the first, uh, when Ghana was about to get color TV, I wrote the first feature article in the spectator for Ghana Goes wow. Color around 1887. Wow. And then also solar energy. From there, I moved to the National Energy Board then. Uh, oh. Then I've been in this sector to, to uh, two years ago that I retired. Yeah, and now a different do a between a different job together. <laughs> yeah. Yes, now, yes uh, this uh, I think to me, mm -hmm. I see the how to really get to the public, like mm -hmm. you mentioned, is very, very important. Yes. Because uh, astronomy is not new in Ghana. If you have been to University of Kepus, you see yes. a uh, telescope right there at an abandoned. They used to be that. And so I line, there was a change in government and they, they didn't see the importance of astronomy or planetary science, then they collapsed it. Yes. Mm. And then um, we ourselves, I would say that you used to have a national edition symposium. Mm -hmm. Then by the late Professor Aloti, in fact, I was his main man, mentee. You see, in fact, we sat down with him when we were talking about the planetary society, who was the, the main contact person. We see, in fact, when we were trying to draw policy, for the uh, the space for the space using how how do you relate to the existing universities? If it means paying really visit to them, making some road show to the universities, to so that also to enable some of them to risk to start some of these space program like planetary science. I remember very well. I think 1996 or so, when the University of Nigeria at Insuka was opening their planetary science program. Mm -hmm. Because of my membership then at the um, planetary society, I was invited to Insuka, BC. Otherwise, a time will come, somebody will come and say he doesn't see the importance of this. And then it will going to affect your salary, going to affect your funding. If you are not careful, the whole thing dies down. So now yeah. how is to link yeah. up with these, some of these uh, existing institutions, academic institutions, to see the importance of space uh, technology and space science. These opportunities that you can have with outside for further studies and all that. I remember similar thing was with mathematics on trip of Alote. Then we started this AIMS, African Institute of Mathematical Sciences. Then our people now re revive the interest of mathematics in the youth, particularly we have our ladies, young ladies, and all this coming in. So we have to have a program like that. How is linked to probably the existing institutions? You see, to show that people will see the oh, there's opportunity. There are a number of them, particularly in the fiscal side, like this, who may be interested in this area. But it's the, where do we go after this? Because Ghana, employment job creation is very, very important. So that was the, my advice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I, don't, I, I heard you ask some questions in the middle. So to answer to those questions, most, I think almost all the universities, physics departments are our stakeholders. We are in communication with most of the head of departments and the universities and their vice chancellors. Now there are, there, are, there are plans in place to develop a curriculum for astrophysics and all some of the related courses around astronomy, but you know, it has to go through accreditation and all those stuff. And probably one, a, a first host university to first host it, and then the others will join in. So there are, plans in place for that. Yes, I know things in Ghana move slowly. And we are now, we have now you know, finished and we are now finding our feet. Because before it was mostly logistics, get the telescope ready and stuff like that. But now plans are in place to start working on having astronomy in the curriculum of most of the physics departments. So it will come. It will come. You'll see it soon. <laughs> um, then hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll try our best. Um, I remember Abraham asked a question about when are we planning to launch a telescope? So um, a telescope launch, and uh, 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 is it launch into space? So that involves a lot of money that we probably don't have right now because much la most launches into into the International Space Station need collaborates multiple countries. It's not just one country that does it. And Ghana may not be there yet, but we will do that. 
one day, one day we will with, with energetic people joining in young, vibrant, uh, innovative and forward thinking people joining us. I'm sure Ghana will go there soon. Um, but we are currently pursuing um, applying space technology to our lives, to make our lives better. Because it will make sense if the technology doesn't make our lives better and we want to spend money to go into space or like travel into space when we can't use the technology that are already existing to make our lives better. So why now space science is trying to show how the technologies are making our lives better. And when we get those technologies out into the public, so that people know, the policymakers know, the government know, then you can take our funding to launch a satellite or something into space. So that's where we are right now, where we are right now. Um, is there another question? Yes, I'm not interrupting. Uh, yeah, yeah. I do remember Professor Adumaku once said we are trying to have a program, particularly drones, but to help those in the mining communities. Yes. You see, but like this, Galamse and all those kind of things. Yes. I don't know how it got into, but I think such a thing, when where people see it's real practicality, then they are prepared to put a lot of funds for your activities. Exactly, you know, yes. But as you said, governments go governments, and sometimes some things are allowed for some governments, sometimes some governments, and you maybe not even a government change, maybe a minister change can interrupt, you know, the flow of you know, a particular plan. So some of these things are in the pipeline and they need more, maybe probably lobbying and talking with the policymakers. So that's that what I would say. I'm not an administrator, I'm not head of, so I can't really give much. Yeah, I'm basically a research scientist, <laughs> doing science. <laughs> uh, I, I read a question in the chat saying, um, how do you get employment in data science? No, did I see that right? I, somebody asked a question that, um, is it easy to get employment? Currently in Ghana, in astronomy, in space science in Ghana, it won't be that easy because, you know, I know how to say it. We need a, you know, we don't need a, we need the people. It's just that we are mostly getting funding from the government. So maybe getting employment may be a bit dicey, but the, that skill, if you do have it, is needed almost everywhere that astronomy is going on. And not even astronomy, if you have that skill, you can go anywhere. Banks need you. Um, <laughs> um, people who sell need you. MTA needs you because they need you to work on their data. Most, most people working with big data need you. The weather station needs you. And the, the airport needs you. Baggage control people need you. So you can, you don't have to say, I want to, you, you, you don't have to be stuck on astronomy if you have that skill. If you have that skill, I really applaud you. I applaud you if you have that skill of data analysis and engineering data science, I really applaud you. And you can go anywhere. You can still come, I can do uh, some form of um, intention or something. Come and see what we do. Use some of our data to do some of your work or publications, and we'll be happy to work with you. So, that's what I'll say to that. Um, so, is there another question there? Is there any hand raised? Um, I, I don't think so. I just wanted to say, hold on, if I could just uh, uh, say a couple of things. Um, I know it, last night we said it can seem that things are moving very slowly. Uh, uh, but there are things are moving, you know, there are things that are happening and it's just that I feel like the science space and the astronomy space is not very well known and not very visible. So when we're in it, we know that things are happening. Uh, for example, talking about astronomy, uh, I mean, I don't know so much about the universities, but in schools, you know, there's now a new office of astronomy for education and their role. I mean, it's a global office. It's not just for Ghana or anything, but, you know, their role is to support people looking to get more astronomy into schools or support teachers and you know they, they can help with resources and things like that so that's going on um the thing about when are we going to launch uh something into space well i, I i'm going to put a word in for solomon because i don't think he can say it because it's his own his own little baby you know you know he has a startup and he's training students to do electronics to to do as he said at the beginning a little experimental satellite i mean that's how you start you know you might think yeah. oh well that's not a satellite but that's how you start where do you start from you start from the beginning with the basics electronics coding robotics whatever it is small satellites going up with a balloon and and then you you build the skills from there so 
Um, and I've been really impressed by, by what they're doing and the links to other companies to saying, oh, that's good that you're doing. I'll help with this. And, you know, all sorts of, you know, all sorts of other partnerships going on. So, so there are things happening. Yeah, we all want it to go faster, <laughs> but there are things happening. Um, and uh, so, yeah, I, 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 I think, I mean, we, we have to be optimistic, but we do have to keep pushing because, yeah, it's not easy, but, you know, yes. we're trying to get there. And yes, there is a, sorry, there is a, um, a, a question in the chat from Josh. Uh, can you throw more light on radiation pattern? Radiation pattern. Yeah, I think that was in your your list of things. Oh, let me Are see. We... Hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think here, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, no, and then. I said, so I'm not the in all and be all of astronomy. <laughs> I might know some things, I might not know all things. So what, what I think I, a radiation pattern, pattern is, is possibly like, no, I probably don't know what that one is. I don't, I don't, I don't say anything that's, well, <laughs> we'll give you a wrong information. <laughs> what I know about our space, I will probably all have to go and find out what radiation pattern is, but they do do it. So we'll go and check about one. Yeah, we we'll have to go and check about that. Yeah. Sorry, Josh. <laughs> Any other question? Please, can everyone mute if you're not talking? There's some background noise. Are any other questions? Hello. My concern is really over dependence on government for funding. That's what I'm talking about. So we have to explore other means. Like I said, once. Like, for example, when we started doing the AIMS, actually nothing was coming from the government. We see we're using outside support like the IC, uh, uh, ICTP and mm -hmm. others, and IS and all that. And a good example, even, I was heavily involved, what we call the National Energy Symposium in Ghana here, right from the 90s. So then we insist that, hey, if you keep depending on the government, a time will come, a government, somebody will come, like a minister will come, I'm not interested in this. And this happened in 2001, so, so 2009, that we have our last symposium. The person didn't see it uh, as very important and all those things, so the, the support was done. And I do recall, by earlier times, the late Alote was trying to, go, was able to get some funding from somewhere to support our programs. But that time was old, and so the attention also have moved to other things else. So that is key, very important, you see. And then, like I said, visibility, like you mentioned, the areas of immediate applicable people, people will see the results in this country. Yes. Yeah. Then you have yes. the other things, yeah. And then other people can contribute and all those to grow the sector, the activities. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Joseph. Thank you so much, Mr. Sandor. I really appreciate it. We'll take note of that. And we are really working towards most of what you are saying. So you'll see us soon. We'll try our best. Thank you so much. Um, are there any questions, Sarah, then? Um, yeah, so thank you so much. Um, I think we need to wrap up. We have actually gone beyond time, but um, I should say it has really been interesting and um, we hope you guys learned um, a lot. Um, but before we go, I think there are a few more um, things that we usually do. So I'll do the astronomy news and Sarah will um, do um, the what's in the oh, next. So, so look, be, before you run up, eh, Please, I'm also a uh, 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 this antenna modeling. Antenna modeling. When you talk of antenna, I look at my radio. I saw that thing on top of my radio. Please, can you elaborate? Tell us what do you mean by antenna modeling? Can I do it in my house? If because where I am, I find it difficult getting some of the stations. So can I do it in my house? Or can I? Is there something I can do to, to get a very good reception in my house? Antenna modeling. All right. So, um, so if you're asking about um, these antennas, so I mean, it depends on what you want to use it for. If it's in terms of boosting your signals, um, I mean, there are different different types of antennas you could use for which signal you want to pick up. For example, you can actually build um, something called a dipole, which can actually be able to take data from one of NASA's satellites. 
So um, if, if you say antenna models, you have to be a little bit more specific I mean, to um, try to help you what you want. But I think in terms of um, our local and then household uses, um, I mean, the basic antennas we have either to make our signals better for our television and then all those things. And um, the usual ones are okay, but um, yeah, I think that's what I can say in terms of antenna models and what you could use it for. And I hope that's clear. Okay. But as it, I think we need to we need to uh, wrap up. So um, yes, yes. So uh, um, yeah, yeah. So thank you so much again for your questions and actually joining. Today has been really great, and especially having to know about a little bit of history behind um, the Ghana Radio Astronomy Observatory and so those other stuff. But I think with this, maybe we can invite. Um, um, Mr. Is it um, Joseph and then um, um, Sando, and then also maybe um, I'm trying to remember the other thing. Yeah, and then yeah. Maybe, um, yeah. So also uh, maybe talk about a few of these things and then um, the background later. So thank you so much. I'll just quickly go on to do the astronomy news. So let me share my screen. Um, I hope you guys can see. Um, yes. So yeah, I hope people can see my screen now. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so if you remember some, a few years ago, really, I think, yeah, in 2019, um, astronomers announced that we have been able to have the very first image of a black hole. And this was amazing because uh, before that, all what we were doing was um, actually simulating how these black holes could actually look like. Um, and in 2019, we actually had the very first image. Now, um, just a few days ago on the 20. Um, I think in the fifth, really, uh, morning. So actually, that's that's on the uh, on the top. So astronomers announced that we have now um, been able to have the second image um, of another black hole, and this one is special because this happens to be the black hole at the center of our own galaxy, and it's called um, um, the Sagittarius A star. Um, and this was actually uh, possible because of um, a telescope called the Event Horizon Telescope, and this is a radio telescope. And it's very special because it's not just one telescope, but it's actually eight different telescopes which were, were combined to be able to actually view this. And I'm sure you'll be happy to know that in the future, um, with the SKA project, Ghana's Radio Astronomy Telescope can actually take part in such um, a research or in, in something like that, which can actually help us to um, get more details of things like black holes and all these things. So I'm sure you might have seen it in the news. Um, and um, it's incredible because um, for a long time, we have not been able to actually have this. And what is in interesting is that the very first um, image of the black hole that was um, observed was kind of a very, very um, small one. If I mean very, very, I don't mean very, very small. Um, more than 10 um, times the mass of our sun. However, this one is very, very big. Um, and its gravity is actually about 4 million times and that of our own sun. So it's really incredible. Um, and the reason why you, I think you'd be wondering, oh, we say a black hole, no light can escape and stuff like that. So how, we, how was it able to actually have this? So this is because around a black hole, we have a region called a event horizon. And that's just the point where you actually have particles before they, they can be sucked into the black hole. And that's just like the boundary. And what happens is that um, because there are lots of particle interactions, you have some of these particles being very energetic. And with radio telescope, we are able to pick up um, these um, various radiations. And that's why we, we have been able to see this black hole. So this is incredible. And if you are interested in uh, more of these, you can actually go on and, and read about this story. Um, and uh, in, in, in our other sections, or to kind of announce some of our upcoming stuff, um, I think next um, we would have um, Dr. Cyril Boateng, who is um, actually with the KNEST, and he, he will be talking about um, stuff that have to do with asteroids. So um, join you, I mean, join us uh, next time um, so that we can talk about asteroids. Um, over to you, Sarah, to do the um, what's in the night sky. Okay, just cool. Oh, am I still? Oh, I'm not muted. Right, yes, so let me sorry, make sure I'm in the right place. Hold on. Okay, let me
Okay, so yes, so what's in the night sky? Well, for the past few months, and this month uh, and next month is no different, it's actually more like what's in the morning sky. So please, you need to be an early riser or you need to make yourself get out of bed, <laughs> otherwise you'll miss everything. So what's happening is, uh, in fact, tomorrow morning, uh, before dawn, uh, first of all, you'll, oh, no, hold on, sorry, I'm, I think this is in the way, hold on, it's okay, you'll be able to see Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, and Venus, so these four planets have been in the morning sky for, for quite some time now, um, and tomorrow morning, Jupiter and Mars will appear to be very close together, that's what we call a conjunction, um, so uh, through binoculars or something, it'll look like they're um, about the a distance of a full moon apart. So, of course, they're not literally that close. It's, it's like an optical illusion. It's just how it appears from our vantage point on Earth. Uh, but it's always nice to be able to see one or two planets very close together. So if you can manage it, try and get up before dawn and see that tomorrow morning. And then any other day, as I said, you'll be able to see these planets, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars, and Venus. Uh, and then later in the month, you might also be able to see Mercury, but Mercury is quite difficult to spot. Uh, it's because it's so close to the sun, it's always very close to the horizon. So if you've got lots of tall buildings, you, you, you won't be able to see it. So it's worth keeping an eye out for. On it then, on certain days, the moon will be close to the planet. So on the 18th, it will be just above Saturn. On the 21st, it'll be above Jupiter. On the 22nd, between Jupiter and Mars. And on the 26th, just a tiny crescent moon there, just close to Venus. Um, so that can, can help you find, find the planets. Oh, I think that's it. Sorry, yes. So that, so basically, please, early morning, see if you can get yourself out of bed. I have managed it a couple of times. I know it's not easy, but you will get to see lots of planets. So I don't think, I, actually, I think you've given the announcements already, haven't you, Solomon? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I have to do it. Yeah, so, uh, the last bit of announcement is that we do have social media pages. So I'll send it, I think, in the e email to everybody. But you can check us at, at Ghana Planetarium on Twitter um, and also at X Space Solution on Twitter. Um, I think you can also get us on um, um, Instagram and also on Facebook at X Space Solution. And also, I think Ghana Planetarium also on, on Facebook. So please check there because usually whenever we have some of these, um, upcoming section. We announce it there so that you get to know um, before you actually register. So I just want to say a big thank you to Dr. Naomi Asabre for actually um, agreeing to host this event and it's been great um, uh, and it's it's very evident because we have a few more people than usual and who have joined today's section. So thank you so much and then the great work. Um, I didn't really get to talk about some of the cool stuff that you mentioned in there because I'm actually working with uh, radio astronomy data myself and it's really fun. And yeah. Thank you. So, um, thank you so much um, for what you, Sarah, for any additional words. And also, yeah. Thank, thank you for inviting. Uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, no, just thank you again, <laughs> Naomi, and thank you everybody for joining and all the great questions. Oh. Yes, do. Uh, sorry, yeah. Sorry, thank you. I'll just take it now. So, you can turn on okay. the that we can just take a screenshot of everybody here while Sarah oh. is. About yes, yeah. please. If you don't mind, then yeah, please turn on your video. Then we'll take a photo. Only if if you're happy to do so. Um, but yes, yeah, so thank you everyone for coming along. Um, you know, if you do still have questions, as I said you can send them in on Facebook or you know our emails or anything like that. Um, when you registered, um, there was a question of whether you want to be added to the mailing list. So if you said yes, I will add you to the planetarium mailing list, and then you'll uh, you'll get notification of of any other upcoming events. Oh, it's lovely to see everybody. Um, if you do get up early and see the uh, uh, the planets, do feel, if you're able to take a photo, you could send it to us. We always like to see those. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Smile. So, yes, big smiles, please. Nice to see you, everybody. Thank you so much, especially because people are joining from different parts of the world, and it's really great. Yeah. Um, I think today's theme has been around and really astronomy, but also talking about how we should develop uh, our own astronomy in Africa and also in Ghana. Yeah. Please keep getting more people in here like I mean we have been doing and I'm sure we'll get 
uh, but lots more people excited and also to go on. So thank you, everybody. Um, I think we have gone way beyond our time. And uh, <laughs> we'll see you next month. Yes. Okay, see you, everyone. Okay. Bye bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. We're going to end the section now. Thank you and bye. Bye. Oh, I've, and I forgot to thank Jemima for taking over from me last bye. week, last month. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you, Jemima. Oh, it's all right. I'm happy to help. I'm happy to help. So I'm guessing you would stay, right? I uh, can do, yes. And then it's not to be moving. And stop recording.